It's like um, one of those documentaries on planet Earth, but it's right here in front of you. It's really cool. We are Susie and Martin, a couple of longtime Seattle residents looking to escape the rain. So we're heading to Northern California for a few weeks and taking our baby Julian on his first long road trip. In this episode, we venture out from our home base of Pacific Grove and explore the nearby town of Carmel by the Sea, as well as Pebble Beach and the 17 mile drive and Point Lobos State Natural Reserve. This is our second full day in Monterey, and today we are heading to the beach, specifically to Carmel. Yeah, the weather right now is fantastic. Uh, it's the warmest day ever since we left Seattle, really ever since the summer for us. We arrived at Carmel by the sea. We're trying to understand this place. It's very, very cute looking, and it's very affluent by the looks of it, upper class. Right now we're heading to a farmer's market. The town itself is actually pretty big in terms of the commerce here. A lot of art galleries, boutiques. We're trying to find a place to eat and that's actually proving to be a little bit more difficult. But yeah, the architecture of these buildings is just amazing. It's the prettiest town I think I've ever seen in the US. Yeah, that is not an exaggeration. Mm -hmm. Right here, we're about to check out the farmer's market. They're playing bagpipes. Yeah, and greeted with a really <laughs> nice music. Carmel by the Sea Farmer's Market. Mm, grapes are in season here. Lots of persimmons for sale since we came to California. Good turnout for the market today. This is the other side of the market. So far in this town of Carmel, we're mostly admiring the little boutiques and the streets with cottages. It's an artistic community, right? Artists were commissioned after the earthquake to make it. As soon as you come into here, you notice, you know, despite the great geography, it's actually the architecture that stands out. And the entire thing is kind of made like um, old European cottages, like this one here, for example. They've put a lot of effort into making it old and European, even though I'm sure it wasn't built that long ago. Besides a lot of accommodations and food and other boutiques here in Carmel, another thing that they have a lot of are art galleries. And there's art of all different styles. We passed some sculptures earlier, and here are a bunch of paintings. What we found out in this town is interesting that um, I've been talking about for a while how we're due for a reboot of Impressionism because in the Northwest, especially in the West Coast, there's so many nice gardens that were built all around the Victorian time. And I think it's a fit for here. And we saw that in Carmel, they're actually doing modern impressionism, they call it. And it's kind of a, like a local school of it. So many of these galleries are displaying it and it looks awesome. And I like that they've made many little cool de sacs in here. It also is kind of like Europe and creates more pleasant walking and hanging out spaces. Mm -hmm. The cul-de-sacs also have a lot of greenery, so they've planted a lot of you know, plants that are in full bloom, which is a little bit easier to do with the climate here. I would say of all the places in the USA I have seen this place the most recreates the charm of Europe. Yeah, I agree, and I was really surprised. I don't know. Floating with the five-month-old, it's important that we take him out often and play with him. Yeah, he's actually pretty good. He'll stay in his... Uh, in his stroller for most of the day, but understandably he gets a little bit agitated sometimes and is like, I want to stretch out, I want to move around. So yeah, he's getting a little bit of free time now. We also carry him a lot uh, so that he doesn't get bored of all the same, but it's really helpful. Like here in Carmel, there are all these little areas where you can just kind of take cover and hang out and it's pleasant. Yeah, they're uh, nicely shaded because it is a little bit warmer here. <laughs> Very sunny out. Oh, you got my hair. No. He's going through the hair pulling phase. I'm showing Julian some impressionism here to see how he feels about this art. He's um, inspecting very carefully everything you show him. So when he fixates, he's like a real inspector. All right, let's go check out this little alleyway here, which definitely makes me feel like I'm in Spain. So neat. It's pretty narrow, but it is actually pretty cool. Um, we have some vines here and a little archway, and it looks like it leads to a little art gallery. 
This is so charming and unexpected. One of the things we really like about this town, you can just take a random little alleyway like this, and you never know what you're going to find when you go down it. All right, well, we decided to pause for lunch at a Mediterranean restaurant on the side of the road, so we're doing some outdoor dining. <laughs> Perfect. We got okay. Turkish kofta kebab with lavash, pretty awesome, with tzatziki. And I already went ahead and tried it. Mm. Perfect. So for those who are not familiar with kofta, what is it? Kebab to me means grilled. That's really what it means to me. But the kofta is basically a meatball, kind of Middle Eastern style meatball. And as I've learned, a meatball doesn't need to be circular. <laughs> I was always hung up on the fact that if it's not a little round meatball, it's not a meatball. So in this case, it's that they're actually a little bit longer, and that's kind of you know been the trend. They're either kind of long like sausages, or they might even be flat, which again, I don't call a meatball, but I guess those are technically meatballs. So what's cool is that we're on the main avenue now, Ocean Avenue, and it takes you straight to the beach. But all around you is great architecture and commerce. We made our way down, down the hill, and we are seeing the beach. It looks amazing. And actually, the parking is already very full. And we also noted that this is a Thursday <laughs> afternoon, and the farmer's market was full. This beach is looking full. Uh, pretty remarkable for it being Thursday in November. I don't think that there's a school break, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so it is either that everyone here is rich or a tourist or both. We're on a quest here to try to do caramel by the beach with a stroller. There's some kind of path. It might be doable. This is one of the best places we've ever been. We've been off camera kind of going crazy about it. Check out the kinds of waterfront houses here. Stunning and amazing. And this would be your view if you lived in one of them. That is so amazing. I would not mind at all. Nice waves, actually. Great for surfing. The color of the water is fantastic. It's really, really hard to find anything wrong with this place. Julian is enjoying being shirtless on the beach and bare toe. Doing his happy baby. And barefoot, yeah, doing happy baby yoga. Well, we walked the whole path with the stroller over the whole little bay here. It was so dreamy. It was not a terribly long path, but it is really nice. And I like that we were able to bring the stroller. And you can probably keep going along the road, but it's just not an official path. But yeah, really great. Nice views. This is what you see on this end of the bay. Once you walk the whole path, you see the whole bay. So cool. Here we go. Oh, it's, it's cold. It's like fridge water. It is ice water. In incredible. If you're going to swim in that, you totally need a wetsuit. All right, we finally made it to the beach. So we walk down. Oh, it's going to come again. It's going to come. Cold, cold. water, it's yes. That's cold. the first thing about this it's beach. It's ice cold. <laughs> but it feels good, actually. It actually feels nice because the sun is out. So as long <laughs> as the sun is out and you're only getting your feet wet, it's not bad. But your full body, Oh, that'd be a shocker. They say it's good for circulation and for immunity if you yeah. douse your feet in cold water. So we're getting plenty of that right now. Wim Hof would be proud. He'd be yes, like, go right. for it. At this point, you're almost back in Pacific Grove, actually, where we're staying. We're not that far away, it's just the road is kind of winding and roundabout. We made it to the end of the beach. So there's this golf course here. So you can golf and have this stunning view of the ocean. And so, yeah, this is just an amazing beach. Yeah. I love it. Only one brave soul up beyond here is the guy with the leopard speedos. There's the whole beach behind Susie. Just about 30 more feet. Right. And there we go. Oh, wow, it's actually really hard. It's harder than you would think. Hard and warm. Yeah. Sweet, we did it. All right. So now we turn back. There's not very much left till the car. And we we'll actually have walked it four times because we walked it over there on the high trail. That's true. Hello. And now we're walking Hello. the beach. Yeah. So four times, not bad at all for our first beach day. It's actually a, an amazing first beach day. Yeah. All 
All right, so we left the town of Carmel and we went to go drive through the Carmel Highlands. And so this is a little bit of footage from that drive. It's a really scenic place, a uh, really tight road. So it's not really meant to be uh, driven through as a tourist, but it is really nice to be able to take in the views from up there. Yeah, it's right over the water and the natural preserve Point Lobos. So now we're gonna take the 17 mile drive, which we keep seeing signs for around the Carmel Pacific Grove area. The problem has been that you have to pay at some point when you reach the Pebble Beach area. So right we're about here. to do that right now. Yeah, let's take it out, keep it rolling. Hi, we'd like to take the drive. Yes, it's 1075 Debbie Road. All right. Get Red up. lines up the hill, have a great day. Red lines? Yes. Okay, thank you. thank you. 17 miles, 10 doors. <laughs> it's like 50 cents a mile almost. So far, it's like a nice wooded drive. And this whole area here near Pacific Grove in the Monterey County. It's pretty posh. It's kind of like an upscale place. So it's uh, exploration in these nice habitats that they have. So we continued on the 17 mile drive and this is one of the first stops. It's a really gorgeous white sand beach called Spanish Bay. Take a look at that. So this was where a bunch of Spanish explorers originally camped out at around 1769. They were looking for Monterey Bay, but they couldn't find it because they were going off of a description that was written in the 1600s. So it took them about a year to actually find Monterey Bay. But you know, if you ask me, this is a pretty cool place to stop if you're looking for another uh, part of the California coast. infiltrated the ridge for just 10.75. <laughs> yeah, so we're not far from Spanish Bay. That's over to my right. And uh, over here is known as the Restless Sea, which is apparently one of the most turbulent parts of the Pebble Beach coastline. And so the waves here are just constantly going and smashing against the rocks. And yeah, there's like a little piece of the golf course is right here next to these rocks. It should be really crazy to be golfing right here on a stormy day. That is what is called Point Joe. Oh yeah, so the rest of the sea and then Point Joe is the actual uh, stop here. Our next stop here is Bird Rock, which is right next to Seal Rock. And boy, let me tell you, it certainly smells like both birds and seals here. But Bird Rock is uh, actually full of birds right now, but they did say that in the 1930s, there was about five feet of bird poop covering this rock and it eventually got harvested to be turned into fertilizer. But uh, yeah, it looks to me like there's probably a lot more bird poop being accumulated there based on how many birds are there right now. Right next to that is Seal Rock, which I think is actually full of sea lions. You can see them kind of sunbathing over there and definitely smell them as well. You can always hear and smell sea lions before you actually see them. Martin's here with the long lens. What are you seeing with that? Many sea lions. Yeah? Yeah, the whole rock is covered. Nice. It, it's like um, one of those documentaries on planet Earth, but it's right here in front of you. It's really cool. Pelicans and sea lions are there. Pretty sweet. It looks like a pretty nice beach down here, but you can see that it's uh, corded off. So they don't want you to go down there, probably not to disturb the wildlife. Well, that fog really rolled in thick and fast. The sun is completely gone at this point, but we're here at Fanshell Beach looking for seal pups because supposedly they like to congregate here. So literally just minutes ago, we were down at that beach and could see pretty far out, but now this fog has completely enveloped like the entire beach and it keeps rolling in really thick. Well, there were no seals at that last beach because apparently we have to come during the spring, which is when they congregate and have their pups. So, didn't win this time. We're gonna be watching a cypress instead. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so we're at the midway point of the 17 mile drive, which is where the lone cypress is. And apparently this tree is 250 years old. It's at the end of this little rocky pedestal here. And apparently in 2019, there was a pretty big storm that took away about a third of the tree. So it's kind of on its way out, but looks 
fairly big right here from, from this angle. So a quick note on cypress tree groves. Apparently there are only two native Monterey cypress tree groves in the whole world, and they're right here. So one is here in Pebble Beach, and another is over in the Point Lobo State Reserve. But I had never seen a cypress forest before, and it's cool because cypresses are pretty distinct. They have interesting crowns. They're very interesting trees. They get kind of twisty and yeah, they look kind of otherworldly compared to other trees. And here we're at one of the last points of interest for us here on the 17 mile drive. This, these are the ghost trees at Pescadero Point. These are a bunch of cypress trees that have been sun bleached and really battered by the wind over the years. And they're here at this rocky point where there also can be some big wave surf during the right winter conditions. The surf can get to be up to I think it was 50 feet tall, which is pretty insane. But today, obviously, not the right winter conditions. The surf is very flat and actually very calm. It's not even very foggy at this point either. Today we're again off to a slow start. Just how it goes with a baby. But yet here we are in a state park called Point Lobos, which someone tipped us off is very good. So I read on Wikipedia, they hype it a lot. So we're about to check it out. So right now it's pretty nice because they actually have stroller paths. There's only two uh, trails that have stroller paths and they're kind of short, but we're going to check them out and see where they go. It looks like planet Earth. We're seeing colonies of sea lions out here in the distance. Right on this rock are many sea lions. These coves and beaches are really cool. Kind of dark brown sand, not quite black, but very also intricate cliffs. The sand and the rocks on them are forming many patterns. I also like that they put this fence here, it feels safer. <laughs> you could drop right into the sea otherwise. Yeah, right there, rocky. Some succulents are growing on the banks. It's pretty cool cliff, honestly. With wow, the... yeah, it's really nice. I love these rocks. They just give it so much texture and character. With the beach right, the, right under it. Well, we walked around the corner and it keeps going, I think, into like another little cove. And because it's so foggy today, it's, you know, maybe not as bright and vibrant as it would be if the sun was out. But the fog has its own kind of mystique and really nice vibe to it. <music> So we reached the part on this trail where we need the carrier, the stroller can no longer traverse. And here's what it looks like. It's a little rocky and there's some steps. It's nothing too major, but just not stroller friendly. So the trails here, as you can see, they all have like these cables. So they're really encouraging you to stay on trail and not go off trail. So if you're into off trailing, this isn't necessarily the best place because this whole park is really aimed at nature conservancy. And that's the sea lion rock out there where they're all congregating. You can hear them really well, but it still takes quite a bit of a long zoom to see them. Look at this. It's so cool. Very interesting shapes here. And something orange is eating these trees, killing them slowly, I believe. reached the point where you see the big beach in Carmel that we were the other day when someone told us about this point right here. They literally pointed at this place we're standing on and said go there. So here we are passing under these branches into a clearing with really nice color and cliffs and trees. Probably the most picturesque little bay here so far. Wow, an incredible tree. This tree in the back here is the coolest we've seen so far in this park. Right over the beach, it hangs very precariously. So we decided to take a slightly longer hike. It's about a mile uh, to the first beach that we saw when we first drove in. And so far it's been really nice. It's given us some really nice views into some of the coves. And not stroller friendly, but still fairly easy. I'm doing my weighted vest exercise here. Mm -hmm. I should be so good at backpacking after a year or two of this. There are quite a few staircases though, but they're very nice. They're, it's, this is a really nicely done trail. Julian is inhaling the ocean vapors. 
Oh, I see a starfish. A starfish? Yeah. It's From all the way red. up here? Right there, you see? Oh, it's wow. That's pretty cool. Very beautiful place here. We made it to our destination. So this is the first beach that we first drove into when we first came into the park. And you can indeed hike here. It's a really nice hike. Really recommend doing the hike. Yeah, very beautiful. The camera probably doesn't capture it as well, but it's pretty mysterious and nice. Julian fell asleep. Oh. Well, the day is winding down, and, but it got warmer, and we have chance for one more hike. So the park officially closes at 5 o'clock. You have to be out, so it's about 4.15-ish. So we're going to do this uh, last trail. It's called Bird Island. It's supposed to be stroller-friendly and only about a half mile long. Take a peek at this secret beach over here. It's off limits for humans, but the water even on a cloudy day looks great. A white sand beach, natural arches there. So nice. Turns out three seals have this beach to themselves down there. And they're really cute seals. They're like the little leopard seals. Yeah, they're awesome. They're very chubby, very sweet. And they have a smile on their face when yeah, they're they sleeping. Yeah, they look very cute. Oh, baby. <laughs> so happy. This trail is giving us an unexpected, amazing view, actually. Wow, it gets better. It gets better? Yeah, because there's a beach in front. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah. But the sun is That's shining cool. on the highlands behind. I think it's called the Carmel Highlands. And wow, stunning view right here. Simply stunning view. We're approaching finally the bird island. You can only see it, you can't get on it. But we have big lenses so we can zoom at the birds and find out what is there. Once again, I want to bring your attention to the back there. The hills behind us are so amazing. You see how you get this subtropical forest on a hill over the ocean. And up top is misty and broken up with sun. It's so cool. Oh, and natural arches right here. So cool, so cool. 